All right. So yet again, ISC. Let me turn the game down a little bit. ISC. I I have not seen it yet, but I have uh, looked at my Discord a little bit, uh, as I do, and it's confirmed. A, a, a single river is a giant feature for an ISC. So thank you, Overkill. Appreciate it for your prime. And um, yeah, I'm concerned about this inside star citizen river song but my chat told me that i would like the second part of the show so let's go rivers are more than just water they're a place to all right the first thing that stick sticks out and i i did say this earlier in the stream is i don't think the river looks like Okay, Star Citizen spaceships are, like, far and beyond every other video game I've seen, right? They're so detailed. There they're, has the potential for so much to do in them. You're going in them. They have gravity. You're going out. They may not. There's, like, all sorts of cool stuff, right? Um, the first thing I see here is river. You know, I've seen rivers in video games before. They look a lot like this. Um, but I, I haven't seen trees in the river to explore. before. Explore... I've never seen pine trees growing inside of a river. to find harvestables that you can pick up. They're a place where everything is amplified versus the surrounding terrain. And the very first river will be in 317 through the hills of Microtech. The very first river. Since this time last year, we started to take rivers from what was a pretty tech demo to something we could release. We thought we were ready to put this out in 316. Whoa, really? We I was not expecting that. Okay, cool. We're pretty happy with what we had, but we still needed some more changes to bring it ready to put out into the PU. Okay. We started by doing a refactor, all, all of our object scattering, so we could have far more power and far more performance when we're distributing objects across the planet. Do you know how much this hurts? Do you know how much this hurts to hear? I hope I'm wrong. Okay? I hope I'm wrong. But this is what I just heard in my head. Let me know what you heard. We just spent a lot of time and energy making sure that we can spread more objects around a planet. Great. Good job. Good initiative. None of those objects are more mineables or more harvestables or anything you can play. They're trees around a river. That's what they did. And I, I'm going to I'm going to stop right now and make sure that I phrase this correctly is I think what is happening here looks awesome and is great work by the Planet Tech team and all that stuff. Awesome. I don't want to downplay their job because this is their job and they're doing a damn good job of it. Why is the game never the focus. There's literally one thing you could do. They talk about harvestable soon. Okay, I'll, I'll hold off on harvestables. But I've talked to people about mineables at the company, and one of the issues was a, of like making a huge ore vein of a lot of rocks and um you know, where you would have to, like, almost mark it to come back to it because it would fill a mole or you would have to bring a bunch of ships and play together with people. You know, the gameplay, the 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 amount of, you know, usable and, and, and uh, mineable and great rocks that would be there would force you to play with others, right? It would be a good, you know, gameplay loop. Imagine that. Instead of using the power that they gained, they put trees around a river. And that's the part of Star Citizen that I, I still just struggle with today, 
is they talk about priorities and the priorities just never seem to be in the right place to me. This looks amazing. I mean, look at this scene. Look at the the sunlight on the water. Like flying in in this area would be amazing. Low flying, riding around on, on motorcycles, all that stuff would be very, very cool. But focusing on the game just never seems to be a priority. And it's it's incredibly frustrating sometimes because you want to look at this and be excited about it. But how? How can you when this is what got prioritized over a, a game loop that exists in the game but is severely lacking for this reason that they just explained? One of the biggest things I wanted to improve as well was to increase the density around the rivers. Sorry for the but rant. Without increasing but I, I... the global density of our objects, this was going to be difficult. Which led me to work on on-demand spawn points, a system where we can pass a position to the biome builder and it will automatically scatter appropriate assets at that location. We okay, so this is what he did to make this more possible. Maybe this isn't related to mineables. I, I mean, that was pretty technical. I don't understand it. We now procedurally it. place on-demand spawn points along the length of the river and around the basin. One of the major things that we had to add was dressing presets, uh, which allow us to um, add specific objects around locations like rivers. And we also had to build the river mesh from the ground up, which involves spline mesh building, which took a long time. That okay. did sadly mean that we missed 316, but it's all the better for it, as we've worked on all of these different interactions for the player with the rivers was this ever on the roadmap for 316 this is why you do not show far things that are far out because what would have happened if it was on 316 and it got moved people would have got pissed off we never knew it was there he never had to say that the plan was 316 he never had to say that. Right? Never had to. For example, as of 317, you may now walk down into rivers and oceans as long as you are wearing a helmet. Like, this is really stupid. You may explore underwater and keep your helmet. Not dying is better than dying. Helmet on, you won't drown. You can now drive gravlev bikes over both oceans and rivers oceans without just and falling rivers. through and exploding. That's awesome. So We also good. have harvestables around the river's edge for you to explore and collect. Okay. Also good, but... And I think this is the one harvestable that is useful. I think if you eat this, you gain health. What is it called? Heart of the Woods? Something like that? But... Mineables have gameplay. Harvestables do not. We also did a rework of our water caustic system, meaning that there are water caustics thrown by the river and its basin, both onto objects above the water, like your ship or trees or rocks, and cool. onto the surface below. Okay. Planet content team haven't had a full chance to take a visit of the oceans yet. So while there are assets down there, you can expect improvements in coming patches. Nice. The next big improvement to rivers is going to be fizz areas. So you can throw things into the river and watch them flow down. As well as work on the foliage shader, which is going to create more varied and seasonal foliage okay. across our planets, as well as just the rivers. In the future, what I want is for an artist to be creating a planet and say, okay, I'm happy with the elevation, let's create a river system, and for it to be done. And we're not quite at that stage yet. Each river is maybe one or two clicks, but it needs to be hundreds oh, of rivers that's so planet cool. without even thinking about it. The river Whoa. in 317 doesn't have any missions or QT markers to find it with, so you will have to go exploring to find it. Although hopefully this video has been a help. I feel like we would be able to see it from space, no? Maybe not. It's pretty... It's not that wide. But, yeah, okay. Like, I'm not going to be a huge negative Nancy here and say that 
it's not good looking, but I am going to say I've seen nice looking rivers in other games. Water looks good in other games, all those things. I don't think this is like one of those mind blowing things that Star Citizen has done, but I like that they explained why they did things and, and how a single river prioritized some other problems that we had in the game to fix and things like that, river right? Tech like is more than just adding running water to the surface of our planets and moons. I like that. It's the collective gathering of mesh and shader, erosion and foliage, traversal over, under, and through the surface. And yeah. it's the harbinger of things like lava fields and roads and so much more. Oh, and up okay. Next on this week's so even better, it makes more important things like roads later on. Show, okay. A look at upcoming cool. efforts to improve our reputation and hostility systems in Alpha 317 and beyond. Rep! This is why you guys said we I would be excited. We just got done okay. running Ninetales Zena Threat and Jump Town. Yeah. You seem to be really enjoying these dynamic events. Yes. You're running bounty missions, you're running assassinations, all these things, and we're really excited about that. As a designer, it's pretty difficult to look at these and not see all the little things that we can do to make this better, to make these not just good, but great. And in order to do that in the near future, we're going to be implementing some new features into the reputation and hostility systems. Nice. I like to hear that. I like to hear when he says, as a designer, it's really hard not to see all the problems with these things and, and not to see that we want to improve them. It's not always there. They don't always have the ability to improve them, but for me, it's the like, hey, we know these problems. We just need the manpower to do it. And we all know um, what wonderful single player game is keeping that from happening. With the current reputation system, all of your relationships to NPCs are static. That means yes. that essentially you can't become friends with the, the criminals and you can't become enemies with uh, the law enforcement. In addition, if you shoot someone, just a single bullet can make it so that everyone around you suddenly starts raining hell down upon you. And that can be a pretty <laughs> yep. awful experience. Xeno threat in a nutshell. We're going to be looking to address that in uh, a multitude of ways. We're going to be looking to have reputation start driving and hostility. So Nine tails is high. NPCs react Crusader to security you is really low. You or blackjack. Yeah. As you become uh, more and more friendly, uh, build up that affinity with NPCs of a certain organization, they will begin to shift their opinion of you. You can actually do missions or content for Nine Tails, and if you get to a certain point in their bar, they will stop shooting at you and start just letting you go by, and then eventually even start protecting you. By the same measure, if you start uh, attacking law enforcement or committing too many crimes, after a certain point, uh, Crusader security is going to start hunting you down and attacking you um, on site instead of waiting for you to commit a crime. On the side of making it so that people... I like this. I think you notice a lot of people who play red um, don't play red for very long. You got to pick a faction now. I don't know if that's a good, like how good of a thing that is, but I kind of like that idea. I, I like that you got to You got to pick a side now and um, it, it, it kind of makes sense. I think the only issue that I take with this is playing red is maybe a little bit too difficult until pyro comes. Um, there's really only one place to go and that's grim, right? There aren't too many places you can land playing red. So, yeah, I hope there's some thought going into that. Don't attack you when you just fire a single bullet. We're looking at in the slightly more distant. Like being criminal should be hard, but it almost feels like it's a, it's a little too crazy at the moment. Future where if you are in the green zone with a organization, if they really, really like you, then they actually have a larger threshold that you have to break over in order to cause them to want to attack you. Um, we want, we don't want it to be global so that players can't abuse it, but we do want it to be something that is a bit of a benefit if you go and make friends with these people. Nice. In 3.17, these changes are going to be largely invisible to players. It's really more about, at this point, giving the feature and the tools to our developers so that we can continue building the content that our players... And Bro, they keep doing this, dude. They keep doing this. Okay, so the tech makes it in, and they talk about all the things that they could do, 
but won't do because they never do it. Who are these designers? Who are these developers that make this stuff? Because nobody uses these. They make so many tools and tech that nobody uses. What is this? It's so frustrating. Oh my gosh. So they're basically saying, okay, well, okay, hold on. I'm going to pause. I'm going to roll it all the way back. Like that's the, the rewind sound. I'm going to roll it all the way back. This is the exact same thing they did with the initial release of Reputation. They put it in. They make sure that the back end is working correctly. And then they applied it to missions, I believe. Right? I'm pretty sure that's what they did with rep. You can visually see your rep in one patch. The next patch was when the missions started doing things. And they started progression through bounties, I believe, was, was how it worked. So I'm going to stay calm. I'm not going to be the usual idiot that I am. And I'm just going to be like, all right, I've seen this before. Hist if history repeats itself, it's a good thing, all right? This was a good bit of Star Citizen's history. It was visually displayed, and then it was technically used by us. And our developers really want in 3.18 and onward. Yeah, I'm just this gonna pretend they didn't give a date, to, and then it's instance, not a problem. Threat, make it so that you can actually be on the side of the Xena threat instead of just trolling other players. That's cool. In addition, for Jump Town, this will help us to sort of patch some of the holes where players can exploit the system by grabbing a quick crime stat after they've already pulled out their packages and not have to actually fight people in order to get their drugs. This also enables us to take a lot of our existing content for the lawful side and make criminal missions so that there is actually content in the game for criminals to do in the long term, not just with the but there was always criminal missions so th this excuse is weird there's always been criminal missions they've just not been very good i mean this one was but these events and of course with additional dynamic events rolling out in the future we can start building with this in t in mind from the start this feature will allow us to say that this event is going to have this faction versus this faction and players will be able to be on those yes. sides in a much more permanent and uh invested fashion yes okay that is cool so again saying what the tech can do is is one thing but um actually doing it is another and i really hope that they create a scenario where it's like orcs versus alliance or you know what i mean like those those historic, very great things. All right, well, Luke Presley's here, I just noticed, and he said, the difference with criminals is that you can become friends with Ninetales. Exactly. So that's where, like, it gives you more tools. There's always been criminal missions, but now you have more tools with them, right? Uh, whereas now they're hostile to everybody. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Luke. Yeah, no, I understood that part. I just, um, there's always been criminal missions, so I don't know what stopped you guys from making more criminal missions, basically that wasn't this you just make better criminal missions now not more of them right so yeah very cool so well i guess hold on we're not done yet i thought we were done so what did we learn this week well we learned that microtech's first river is the next step forward and you know you can work with the criminals that will allow developers to bring more texture hazard and opportunity to star citizens planets and moons that the reputation system and its continuing development remain at the heart of enabling developers to create more meaningful and effective mission content and that upcoming it literally just makes the game because they totally destroyed progression through ships I mean, hostility changes means maybe i won't get punished so quickly when i turn a friendly hello into accidental unintended friendly fire <laughs> for inside star citizen xeno threat has Hector struggled with that so much so See, seeing that is a good thing. All right, so that was that was ISC. That was pretty good. Um, chat was right. I really do like the second part <laughs> with reputation. I think the the game is going to be defined through the reputation system. Progression is going to be defined through that in in some fashion at least, and I think it's really good. So I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I really am, and I I, I just. I can't wait. I can't wait for, for that to progress more and more and more and more. One day I want to see Grimhex shooting at, at lawful players. 